So in this one, we are going to be dealing with comments and text and forms. Really, we're going to be working with forms. So we added in this comments array inside of our JSON object that actually has our post, our blog post. So, th so this is ID of number one. So if we actually go into the browser and we want to refresh our JSON post because that's going to make sure that all of our data updates and then I refresh inside of my actual project, I can now see um, this little change. So if I made a change here and said new item in the title and just refreshed in here, it might not always update. So just going and, and doing the request for the JSON will definitely update it. And you might have to clear your cache, but um, that's also how we set it up. We set it up to actually remember this stuff. If you remember back to our service, we have our cache on. So if that was off, it would be a little different. But anyway, so definitely add this comment array in here. So again, it's just comments, quotes around it, colon, and then the square brackets, and then individual actual dictionaries themselves, and that will handle our comments. So to do this, to actually render the comments, we can come back in here, and I'm gonna put in a unordered list for the comments, and we'll just say list element ng-repeat equals to post, or excuse me, comment in post dot comments close off the list tag and then we'll just do comment dot text so this should render our comments just fine we save that refresh now we see our comments here of course we could you know put an h3 tag or something and say comments because that's probably what you'd be more likely to see now another thing of course this is emulating what a server would do so the emulating of the Git process or getting the data. So what we're gonna do now is emulating the posting process, that is add data. And we're gonna do this by creating our own form. So we'll just do form and then close off this form. And all forms need some sort of way to submit. But before we do that, we're gonna actually add in a text area. And this text area is gonna be the text that's gonna be added to this comment. So let's go ahead and say ng-model equals to and I'm gonna call this comment.text because we're going off of this right here. And then I'm also gonna do input type equals to hidden. And I'll just say that the ng-model is equal to comment.id. And we'll close that off. And for now, I'll just put a value of, let's say five. That doesn't matter yet. We will make it matter in a second, but for now, that's what we're gonna do. So, and then finally, we're gonna put an input type of submit, and we'll just close that off. Okay, so we refresh, and now we've got our actual form in here. I go to inspect the element. I see that I've got my ng model stuff set up and a submit button. If I click submit, nothing happens. So, um, except a class does actually happen. So if I click on submit, notice that that class did do it. So if I hit submit again, or wait, let's try that one more time with a refresh. I'm gonna inspect element here. Notice there's no class on here for submitted. I hit submit, it does actually add a class, which is kind of cool. So that means we could all do all of our own sort of styling to this form as we see fit. But of course, what we actually wanna do is show the comment. So to do this, I'm first gonna render a preview of this comment. Now notice that I've called it comment as well as here. So what I'm gonna actually do is call this reply instead of comment just reply and that's pretty much it. And then I wanna preview this reply. So I'll just do P style equals to color of, let's say just red. And we're gonna put our reply dot text here. We'll close this out and we'll refresh in here. So now if I type that, I'm seeing my reply. So obviously I can add my own reply here and save that, refresh, and there it is. Now, since we're doing that, we've got this binding stuff going on. We can do, of course, we can do ng if reply, and now we refresh, and there it goes. So reply is really preview. All right. So now what we wanna do is actually hit submit and add this reply to our comments. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about the things that are important to what we've done so far in just a moment, but I do wanna make this form actually work. And to do this, there's a few ways we could do it. We could do that ng click like we've done before, like we've seen before. And in fact, you could do ng 
confirm click as well, or the confirm click function that we created, which we're not gonna do, but you could do that. But better, you could go on the form and just do ng submit. So what this is, is this is a actual expression that you can you know, execute when you do any sort of submit. So another submit happens sometimes with a text area. So input type equals to text. And sometimes you can actually, if you refresh in here, you can type it out. I'm gonna just show you the actual form to see that it does submit. So notice the classes here. So I typed this out and I pressed enter and that actually submitted the form too. So ng submit actually will handle all of that versus just having the event on the button. This will put it everywhere. Get rid of that text because I don't need it. But the input text area, now we have all the things that we need. So ng submit, that is where we actually have to handle this reply. So to do this, we are gonna go into our, our, uh, post, our blog detail view and we're gonna change a scope and we're gonna wanna make our reply. So we'll just call it um, add reply. And it's gonna be a function and it's gonna do some stuff. So let's actually console log scope dot reply. And let's see what this does. We haven't set reply anywhere other than on the template. So let's actually see what happens. Now go back in, do a little refresh, do this, hit submit, go to our console and nothing happened. Oh, cause we need to set this. So we'll do add reply with the princess parentheses. You don't have to have the parentheses, but you could add them. Hit submit. And there we go. We've got our object of text, right? So let's actually get rid of those parentheses and see what happens. Come back in, refresh, submit. Nothing happens. So parentheses are required. And you can actually pass in the reply itself too. So you can pass in that mod model. Um, so there we go. So we got our ng submit and this is the method that's actually going to run. Uh, but something you might notice is the reply ID doesn't actually show up. So instead of setting the reply ID here, so I have it at value of five, that didn't work. Um, but what we want to do instead is initialize the reply ID to something. And that value should be related to these comments. So there's a few things that we want to do on a component. First of all, we want to add a reply. Secondly, we want to actually set our scope.reply to something. And what I'm going to set it to is ID being to post.comments.length plus one. And then I'll do text being empty text. So I refresh in here and I write my comment. Ah, now I've got my ID there, right? That's perfect. That's what I wanted and that's what I'll continue to want. In fact, I'm going to want to always have this ready and available. So I'm going to cut that out and come in here and just say scope, or excuse me, I'm gonna say function, reset reply. And we're gonna just write that part in there. Okay, very good. So reset reply, we want to initialize that value just like that up here. And then we'll also wanna do it after we add the reply because we actually wanna add our comment or our reply in here. Now again, I'll explain why we need these two fields in just a moment, but um, there is another thing that I wanna do is go back into the template and say ng if reply dot text. Then I refresh, that way the preview is there. And I get this post not defined. So let's go back into our blog detail. Post not defined is from this right here. So let's just change it to scope dot post. Refresh and that error goes away. Okay, cool. So now we've got that ID. But this also means that I can actually push this item. So the scope reply, I'm gonna reset it here, but I, I can actually push this item into these comments. So I can go ahead and copy this right here and now do dot push and do the scope dot reply. Okay, now if you remember the reply, how it comes through, if we look at this console, it is an object, it has curly brackets, it has ID and all this stuff. So what if I just passed something else in there? So what if I did scope.post.comments.push and I did ABC? So I just passed some string in there and that's all I did. So we'll test this out in just a second. So I'm gonna refresh, write some stuff, hit submit. One of my comments actually shows up. The other one does not, right? So the comment list is actually there, but this, this fourth one is not a real comment. But if I type another comment out, I get this error, right? 
So this is something because of how things that have went down with this right here. So let's actually comment that out, save it, refresh, write our comment, hit submit, write another comment, hit submit, and we could keep writing comments all day long. Notice that our Ds are auto incrementing and that's all because of our resetting it. We're resetting it to the length of the array. Now, why didn't this work in particular? Well, that's because it has everything to do with the data as it's set. So the data is set like this. So when we defined our model, we had to set each one of those things, reply ID and reply text. In fact, this input hidden doesn't actually even need to be there because of how we actually are initializing each reply. So when you think about this, we define our model of scope.reply. Let's just ignore some of this stuff for a second. I commented out and I did an empty. This is what I did first when I just put it in the template. That's all I did. And then we was like, oh, well, we want to put the ID in there by default. So I'm going to put some ID in and then I'm going to have my text in there empty. And then after I actually write a reply, then I can change that text and then I can add it to my array by doing that post call. Okay. So let me go ahead and comment that out. Get rid of that. Don't need that. And that's how we actually add comments. It's pretty sh simple and pretty straightforward. Of course, this is not saving these comments, right? So this add reply, there would be a way to save this with our resource, but unfortunately we are not working with um, our actual server or backend server that will allow us to save this realistically in our JSON data. We try, but it's not going to work. But this is the essential way of writing these replies. Notice how dynamic it is. Now quick can write all sorts of replies very, very quickly. In fact, we could go one step further and I'm just showing you stuff that you can do in Angular because it's really, really cool. We can actually add in a new list element here and we'll just call this filter. So we'll say input type equals to text and ng model equals to filter. And we'll just put a placeholder, call it filter comments. This is the power of the two-way binding. So then I can come in here, actually we'll call this ng model, we'll call it query, not filter, because if we use the pipe and then filter colon query, can come back in here. I can add some stuff, another item, um, more text, all sorts of things here. And then I can filter these comments down. Look at that. I can do it in real time. Didn't have to change anything. The state is still there. I'm still adding these comments, so I'm filtering it down, but I'm still adding these comments and it's still working dynamically. Uh, notice that that last one actually didn't come through. So if we got rid of that filter, it, there it is, it's back. So that's not a perfect filter because it's not actually live updating everything, but you kind of get the idea. It actually is working pretty well as far as um, actually filtering this live data. But um, that is the power of Angular. It's really, really nice. And the other nice thing about actually writing this form is you can have your server just kind of handle it in the background. So the, the user, it feels a lot more organic and natural. All right, so that is adding some items into our comments. And now what I want to show you is actually just removing those items and doing so with that confirm click that we created before. See you in the next one.